All right, so in you guys' opinion, pound for pound king right now. What sport? Huh? Canelo, bro. No? Yeah, I can tell no me. argument. Titles don't lie. Numbers don't lie. Canelo's a face of boxing right now. Yeah. Yeah. There's, no, there's no arguing about it. And then I think behind him comes Gervonta and then... But who's going to be the future? So oh. hey, we got fe- We got the futures right here sitting there. That's, we got three futures on the cast, right? right? Too. What, what do you guys think about the, uh, the lightweight division? Uh, lightweight division, you know, it's interesting because, um, for example, you got people that are going through issues. Uh, you got people that are going through accusations. You got people that are going through, through uh, upsets. You know, it's it's the whole lightweight division is the most interesting division of boxing right now. And I'll tell you what, it's, sh- it's so shaken up. Like I like, for example, you know, uh, George Cambosis just won four titles. You know what I mean? Like, it's not the undisputed. Because Devin Haney still has the, the regular title for the WBC, but, but um, you know, he, he won four titles in, in a matter of one fight, and uh, he was the big underdog, and, you know, he came, he came and he won the fight, and so now everyone's trying to pick at him, and, and everyone's trying to get a piece of that fight, you know what I mean, but um, it's an interesting division, you got Ryan, Theo, Rollies, uh, George, Devin, Davis, Devin, not ah, Devin Haney, and even all that, in my opinion. But really? He's not. He's. I mean, I'm not gonna say he's a. He's not a good fighter because he he's a good fighter. But I just feel like he don't belong in in the top names. Cause when you, when you think of the lightweight division, who do you guys think? Who do you guys think of? Like who's the first fighter you think of when I when we bring the lightweight division? You know what I mean? Probably probably Javante Davis for me personally. Okay. Me and my opinion. So exactly for me when I think of the of the when I think of the four of the four now it's it's Gervonta, it's like it's Ryan, it's you know it's it's uh, Tio, Tio's moving up to one forty, George Cambosos now. I think George even don't get me wrong, even though Devin has a title, I just feel like he needs to pass that point to where people start taking seriously. Like for Gervonta, that point was when he beat um, no not even Barrios, was the fight before that. Santa Cruz? No, before he even beat Leo, it was the fight um, Gamboa. Well, when he beat Gamboa. That's what we were like, okay, you know, and then after that he started just, he started going up and up and, and now he is where he's at. I feel like him and, him and George uh, would be a good fight, but I feel like I have to give it to the take at the end of the day. Very good. And what do you think about the rumors uh, with Canelo fighting Charlo potentially? Uh, Say it does happen. So, I mean, he's going to give Charlo his biggest payday. But he's going to beat him. There's no, there's no beating Canelo today unless you knock him out. And you're not gonna do that. You're not gonna do that. He's just too skilled. Yeah, he's a different breed. And he works. He works hard. I, I witnessed that he. Now he's in there in that gym and he's grinding. He works out like he's poor. Yeah, man. Like, like he ain't got nothing else to do. Like, you know what I mean? But like he, he works out like he, like if he's got to work out to be. So, 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 who, so who's your favorite fighter right now? My favorite fighter. Uh, Apart from yourself, because he's supposed to be yourself. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I don't know, I, I, I wouldn't say I'm a favorite fighter, but there's fighters I like watching. Like I said, I like watching Tank, you know, I'm a natural softball, uh, but I fought most of my fights uh, with the dogs. Um, yeah, man, I like watching, you know, uh, Tank, um, you know, just all these other fighters. I like watching Tio, I like watching uh, just a mix of fighters, you know what I mean? Josh, uh, Josh Taylor, uh, Jose Pedraza, man, that guy's, he's the only shock in the world. What about you, Matthew? Um, kind of similar. I mean, I like watching guys. I don't necessarily have like a like a favorite right now, but um, obviously the lightweight division is stacked. I like watching those fights. Um, I would say Javante Davis right now is one of the ones that I really watch. Uh, Canelo, obviously, and um, who else? The heavyweight division is really good right now too. That's kind of mixed up too, you know. Um, so yeah. What about you, Jay Queen? Crazy. We've been on. We. I was. I think I talked to Matias about it before the Teal fight, the lead up, since it got pushed back a bunch of times. Right? We were. We, we have an episode on the podcast. I was, like, crazy for I was like, dude, I think this guy can pull it off. It's. I saw it in the eyes. He was snatching his soul. Man, you guys picked George and you guys picked uh, T.P. Lopez against uh, Loma. And you against Loma. Picked, <laughs> you guys picked both of them. Yeah. And people were, people were commenting saying, you guys don't know shit about boxing. Watch what's going to happen. <laughs> we're like, where are those comments at? Yeah, I never 
Yeah. What about you, J.D. King? Oh, donkey. The donkey. The donkey. Yeah. I, um, to be quite honest about everything, I like watching my, my fighters that I know, that I personally, personally know. I don't mm -hmm. care about and who's who, because I'm Mason. never going to meet Tyson, Canelo, or... Davis or any of them. Okay, so so who do you like to who do you like to watch? Name uh, these guys, right? Right, right. Who we sit with? This is who I watch. This is who I look at every day. Right here, it is last four years. My daughter, her whole fucking life. My man right here, like what? You know what I'm saying? That's what I look out. Fuck, man, I'm gonna look at myself too every day. I'm an MMA fighter, and um, you know, I fight. I fight with everything. My legs, my elbows. That's just what I do. So, as for boxing, it's what I know here, right here. You know, Roxy, you know, people in, in a Blue Moon Gym, Jesse Martinez, as you can see right here. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's just, excuse me. That's just what I know, and that's just what I do. I mean, as far as, you know, MMA, I, you know, I like the gangster fighters, you know, Masvidal, Nate Diaz, but <laughs> myself. You know what I'm saying? You see that one video of the dude where he freaked that, that, freak that other fighter out? And yeah, but you know, motherfuckers that just bring it. You know what I mean? That they don't care. They just put it on the line. We're not going to pick and choose and say this and that. And that you know, oh, you know, I'm not ready for you. I'm ready for you. I'm not ready for you. Put anybody in my face, I'll run it right now. You know, because that's how they think. And, and that, to me, that's a fighter. It's a fighter. So, you know, maybe okay. I couldn't answer your question fully, but it's just how I feel. All right, where, where you grow up at? Fresno, California. North Fresno, South. California. Born and raised. Dang. You got gangsters out there like that? Uh, or are you the one? <laughs> uh, you know, I'm just, uh, I'm everything, man. He's a donkey. Very good. Yeah, yeah that's right. The donkey. <coughs> the donkey. Jay Queen, well, tell us a little background about you, where you grew up. Um, I was born, I was born in Fresno, raised in Kingsburg. I moved to LA when I was 12. I danced competitively for about seven, eight years, started dancing when I was four years old. Well, competed all over California, all over the state, in front of thousands of people. I was really good at it, but it wasn't really my passion, so I moved on, found out martial arts. I did jiu-jitsu for about five, six years, competed. I was a dog on the mats. I won titles everywhere for people all over the US. She won Pan Am titles, national titles, world titles, and jiu-jitsu. Yeah. And still found it that it that was wasn't her passion. My passion. I know. I know what it's And then, true. okay. And then I learned to boxing, stepped in the boxing area. I wanted to learn. I was really good on the ground. I wanted to see where my hands were at. I started Muay Thai. I didn't like it, really. I didn't like being kicked. And then I found that, that I really liked using my hands. So I started using my hands more boxing. And I fell in love with it. I really knew that that's what I wanted to do. That's crazy. Um, Matias, you're no stranger to that. Well, what happened? You know, just guys pulling out, don't want, they don't want the smoke. Yeah. What, what does a fighter go through on the back end? You're preparing guys pulling out, preparing guys. What, what do you, what, how is it like on the fighter side? You know, you go through um, six to eight week training camp, obviously. You know, you're waking up, you're not even eating breakfast. You're waking up, running five miles, doing your thing, eating healthy. You know, um, missing out on family events, friend events, just just a lot of things, you know, in life that you have to sacrifice. And then, you know, leading up to the fights, you know, sometimes opponents go MIA, sometimes they get injured, sometimes the promotion doesn't have a backup, sometimes this, sometimes that, you know what I mean? So, um, so yeah, 
fighters go through so much sacrifice, losing the weight, dieting, doing this, doing that, sacrificing so much of their social life, mental, physical health, and, and yeah, at the end of the day, you know, um, it happens sometimes. And that's what a lot, a lot of the public doesn't see the back end stuff, especially on the come up. Uh, you know, and, and if no one fights, no one gets paid, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, unfortunately, yeah, that, that happens too. Sometimes you get all the sales and you sell all the tickets and you're the man, like it is, you know, like me up. too, you know, you do all that, it's the truth, and then when you fucking uh, pull out the day of the fight, that's the worst. Right. That's the worst. That's all the business end of it. Here, yeah. All your people are here, and you're scrambling, you know, if you're a nobody, you're like, okay, then you can stop. But at that point in time, you just gotta figure out how you're gonna fight, how you're gonna get somebody to fight you that day. No, there's, a lot, there's a lot of shit behind it that people don't know. You may have a four days before my fight, my last fight, I, this motherfucking finger right here looked like a hell. And I had to break it back in place on the spot. People don't, you know, there's a lot of shit motherfuckers don't know. I fought with a cracked leg. With a cracked leg? The crack, you know, a hairline crack down right here. Really? There's a lot of things that uh, humans don't know. I call them humans, people, you know, they don't know. Civilians. Millions, humans, pedestrians, whatever the fuck it is. It's for us, I just don't just, you know, to do what we do, you can't be normal. Right. You, you really gotta work. love what you do. Because at the end of the day, if you're gonna sit there and sacrifice so much, this and that, it's not about money. You right. literally have to love, eat, breathe, sleep, shit this stuff. You know what I mean? So, yeah, he's right. Yeah. What did training camp? camp start for you? Get Shit, like two days ago. Uh, but you know, Monday, we're back into the gym. To our gym, you know, training for February 26th in Pomona, California. Uh, I don't know about one of my sparring. It's got in a car accident. Uh, yeah. that, like, what happened? Like, two days ago. Um, I drive my car, sir, and the car in front of me starts slowing down, so I merge onto the left lane. And uh, there's a Porsche in front of me. And, uh, you know, we were catching speed, probably went up to like 65. And then they brake check, and I was like a good five cars behind them. And I slammed on my brakes, and my brakes started skipping. Like, like the rollers were catching on the brake pads or anything. And so my car just kept like pretty much lagging. And then I got really close to the Porsche and I, I just, I swerved the wheel and I hit, I hit, just so I could take the impact on myself on the side, you know, and I ended up hitting into the Porsche and took my whole car out and totaled it. So I came out still pretty. Yeah, I was about to say, I can't even say that. <laughs> no, man. man. I, I never make it so hard. That, that airbag, man, that, it uppercut the shit. <laughs> like, I literally seen it slow motion, bro. I seen, I seen boom hit, and then I just see my the stand wheel in the middle just break open in slow motion. Boom, smack in my face. And it was just all crazy, man. But, so what's up? What's the little background on you? Uh, born and raised in Ulysses, Kansas. Uh, 19 years old. Born January 5th, 2003. Uh, I started boxing when I was 7 years old out there, you know, because uh, I would just get into little little fights in the park, you know what I mean? So my dad took me and my big brother to the gym. Been out there, fought, was always doing my stuff out there. Um, when I turned 17, I moved out here to LA, started training with Coach G and Coach Andy and Mark, which are the conditioning coaches. And uh, you know, and last year, uh, I lost my little brother, so I went home for a while. And, uh, I really thought I was done boxing, you know, I really, I really believed I was done boxing, but, but I ended up, you know, my brother came and visited me, and uh, so I ended up coming back, you know. And, uh, Boxing. Uh, I just fought. I lost my brother in May. I fought in November, and uh, now here I am getting ready for another one. You, know I mean? you didn't give up, man. You followed your passion and you fought through it. Yeah, so we're here today. It's the hardest thing I think somebody can fucking do. Yeah. I commend you, dog. Appreciate you, dog. For real. But you know we here. You know, not even a car crash should kill me. I'll tell you, I'm supposed to fly through that window. I'm not even playing. Like, I'm gonna show y'all right now. It like, looked yeah. like a car, looked like a crushed skittle. Yeah, bro. Damn. Yeah, my poor baby. You got full coverage? Damn. Yeah, gap yeah, insurance too. So you know what that means? I'm going to get Woo, a, a new, brand whip. new Chrysler. A new whip. Go get the health camp. Yeah. Nah, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. So I'm kidding, I see no. your last fight when you fought in Jalisco. I think you went with... Oh, that was my third fight. That was your third yeah. fight? Dude, that body shot that you gave him that yeah, ended yeah. the fight, that shit was beautiful, bro. Yeah, well, um, a lot of people don't even know this, but um, the reason they stopped the fight is because I... 
I don't know if the ref if the ref is supposed to automatically stop the fight when you break their nose or what, but he kept telling him his he kept telling the corner his nose. He could like in the video you see him go like this, like his nose, his nose. The fighter's like, nah, nah. Now, that was a fun fight. That was uh, my first fight with someone actually putting pressure on me. And so like, that's how I was kind of just boxing and using the ring, you know, using the footwork. Oh, couple rounds. Uh, you know, it was good. It was fun dancing. Um, but I think my last fight when I really showed uh, the balls, that's when I was like, I bet down and I was like, let's go, you know what I mean? So I'm from Pomona. Yeah, so I'll be up there in Pomona, going for 5 0 uh, on Martin Nation, Martin Nation's card. Uh, yeah, I mean, shit. My, my work speaks for itself, you know, I can't really talk too much about my experience, but humbly just pull up and watch me do my thing, and you like it. So, Matias, your last fight in the, in the body shot. How's yeah, that? October 2nd, uh, I was the main event for Red Boxing Promotions in uh, CB Valley, California. Shout out to all the team. Radcliffe came out, showed out. We were mobbing deep out there. And yeah, it was a great event, and it would have left into the body. In one round? Yeah, first round? it was the first round. First round, yeah. minute, 30, minute 38? I don't remember. I was in the zone, but yeah. It, it, you said, it was, you said it was, a minute 50 something seconds, and his mom was like, it was a minute 24 30, something. Yeah, I <laughs> could <laughs> check everybody. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, thank you guys uh, for giving us your time. Appreciate it. Anything you guys want to tell the fans? Man, come out and support, yeah. watch us, follow us. Give us the dates. Shout, shout out the dates. JD Kane underscore. Uh, JD underscore Kane. Fuck it is. <laughs> Fuck it is. Fuck it is. <laughs> At Matias Boxer, M A T H I A S Boxer. And uh, yeah, that's all I'm just on Instagram. Yeah. Uh, Jaylene Nelson, J A L E N E L S O N. Kid.Kansas. We're pretty simple. Um, <laughs> we are here at. Uh, you know, EC, um, it's our new gym. We're here for the grand opening. That's why we always all brought together today. So if you want to come work out, uh, we got uh, a dance floor on our side. We got, you know, a strength conditioning coach, boxing, uh, pull through. It's 333 North Mission Road. Um, hours will be worked out. If you're interested, hit me up on my Instagram, at kid.kansas. And uh, thank you everybody for coming through. And also, uh, for most of us, we all got fights coming up February 26th. Kings County Fairgrounds, I'll be fighting 185 for a title, probably fight serious, um, February 26th, and I'll be fighting then, I know this is fighting, Kings County is fighting, and she's going to be fighting soon, she'll be fighting Cinco de Mayo, that's a little bit of ways, but uh, come out, watch us, support, follow us, and uh, let's get it. February 12th, Commerce Casino. Boom, there it is, thanks for your time guys.